Now, this is the one big thing you always hear from players who ultimately take their talents overseas is pitching is so wildly different, especially not only how they're choosing to mix it up, but that it is pretty breaking ball heavy. So this is a guy who's going to be tested a little bit. The bright side is he doesn't have to be the biggest shining star in New York. He's got some bigger names that are going to shoulder that a little bit for him. But I mean, guys, what do you take from this for a guy that we haven't gotten to see in person? Well, just watching the highlights immediately. I mean, we've seen uh, obviously WBC highlights going up against uh, uh, the U.S. players, and he really did well. As you can see, the elevated fastball there plays everywhere, especially when you throw in the upper 90s. And if you pair it up with a nasty split, it's devastating, really, because it looks exactly like the fastball you were laid on. Uh, see why? So you and I know firsthand <laughs> when guys like that come up, they are able to be effective because of that combination. Right, and, and Mel, you hit it on it, you know, in the beginning. When you're able to match him up with Verlander and Scherzer and you don't have to come over and be the guy, and I really don't even want to put that stigma on him because who says he can't be the guy? We always, you know, lean to say, oh, no, he doesn't have to deal with all that pressure. This guy has nine years already of experience, and I'm sure he's been their ace over there for the majority of those years and been able to have a lot of success. So I don't think we could minimize what he's been able to do over there because you have a lot of American pitchers who go over to Japan, go over to other countries, and they actually come back better than they were, like a Miles Michaelis or somebody like that who's able to go over there, change their strategy or or style of game and come over and be successful. But that stuff plays, Los. I mean, you're talking about somebody who's in the upper 90s, nasty split, continuing to work on his slider. You can't tell me that there's a whole lot of guys who are just running to the bat rack to try to jump in the box against a guy like that. So I'm very curious to see how he's able to come over here, make the adjustment, but I don't think he'll have any problems. This may sneakily be like one of the best deals of the offseason, in my opinion, because if you're able to get him for a five-year 75, I understand there's some risk involved when you haven't seen so much of a player, but the benefit of that is that the hitters haven't seen him either. So that's a huge advantage for the pitcher, and he still gets the opt-out after the three years to where, okay, if y'all were able to steal me for $15 million a year, I still have the ability to move around after that if I can come over here and prove what I can do. But so I think it's a great signing. Highly incentivized, right? Because there's mm -hmm. something psychological there as well. When you have that opt-out, it's like, wait a second, you know, I have to go out there and post. Not that he needed that because, as you heard his teammate talk about him, he is already considered a freak, by the way, athletically. Uh, but he is a true professional. So I expect him actually to come out here and be seamless. Yes, the hitters... Mm -hmm. No doubt about it, this is the major leagues. But that upper, the, the, the fastball in the upper 90s, the top of the zone, working with that uh, split, it's absolutely nice. And I love what the Mets did here. Yes, last year you had a great rotation. You went out, you won a lot of ball games, you earned yourself to the playoffs, you dominated, but you lost some of those pieces. Yes, you lost Bassett, you lost DeGrom, you lost Taiwan Walker, but you were able to come in and replenish those pieces and replace them with Verlander, Singa, you bring back Quintana. I mean, these are great moves right here, you know, for the Mets. Well, and you want to add to this here as well. You guys were talking about this during the break, asking how big he was. Did he compare to the stature of a guy like a Spencer Strider who was just built like concrete? And he's surprisingly a little more spry than that. But what you have to love the most about this rotation is the fact that it seems they're getting healthier. Last year, and for, let's be honest, plenty of years now, we've seen DeGrom struggle to stay healthy. Scherzer had ups and downs last year, as well as Taiwan Walker. This is a guy who seems like he's built pretty sturdy. They train exceptionally well over there, especially for the their pitchers because they know what's expected of them. So maybe this is going to be a more stable rotation that's even more beneficial than the numbers themselves. I think the numbers will support that these guys on paper should be more reliable. You have Verlander and Scherzer, and I think they're going to complement each other so well. Scherzer is one of those competitive guys that if you bring in a guy like Verlander who you know wants the ball every five days, every six days, whatever route they decide to go. I feel like that energy, they'll go back to back. They'll feed off of that. If somebody has a little nagging thing going on, I feel like those two players will pitch through that on a regular basis. And then having Singa been, be able to come in and follow that up and Quintana to be a reliable piece, it's a really strong rotation. And we're talking about being durable, right? Because Scherzer is one of those guys who consistently gives you 200-plus uh, innings, even despite the, the injuries that he's had uh, as of late. Uh, Senga definitely doing it over there. And now coming over here, I think that it's going to be 
quite seamless, the transition. But how about Cookie Carrasco? You know, one of these guys that I think we sometimes forget about because of the injuries that he's had to uh, overcome. But if he steps up to the table, Quintana stepping up to the table, could it be that the Mets rotation is better now than it was last season? We can make an argument that that is the case. Especially, I know Senga is one of those wild cards. Maybe that is the question mark. But how much of a question mark really is he? When you look at his stuff. Right, I'll take that question mark all day long. I'm like, I'll, I'll go with that. That's a good wild card. I'll take it.